Hi, I'm Brett Larkin. In this practice, we're going to focus on twists. Twists are detoxifying and purifying, but for the purposes of today, we're going to take it even a step further to talk about how what we're really detoxing out of our body is anything that is blocking us from listening well to ourselves and to those around us. So to begin, we're going to take a cleansing breath that's called Kabbalabhati. And how it works is like this. You're going to exhale all the air out of your lungs. You're going to inhale halfway. And you're going to begin pumping the stomach so the navel moves in towards the spine while releasing sharp exhales from the nose so the inhale happens passively. So it looks like this. So the belly button is just pumping in towards the spine and you're releasing strong exhales through the nose. Then at the end of this, we're going to take what's called a triple lock. So you're going to engage your pelvis as if you were trying to stop from urinating. You're going to engage your navel up into your spine as if your navel could fly up in between your rib cage. And then you're going to bow your chin slightly. We're going to hold the breath and then we're going to exhale, let it all go. So let's try that. Inhale deeply. Exhale the air all the way. Inhale halfway and begin. So the navel is just pumping in towards the spine. It's also a core exercise. And you're just exhaling through the nose as fast or as slowly as you want. You find your pace and what makes sense for you and your body and this moment. And then exhale, hold, engage the pelvis, lift the belly button up into the rib cage, lower the chin, hold the breath, this is a triple lock, and then as you need to, exhale, let it go, the chin lift up, find center once again. Nice. We're going to do it one more time. So inhale. Exhale all the way. Inhale halfway and begin. Belly pumps, navel moves in towards the spine. And we have rapid exhalations through the nose. Inhale is passive. Nice, and then hold. Squeeze your pelvis as if you were stopping urination. Navel into the spine, up into the rib cage. Drop the chin slightly. Elbows relax down the back, triple lock. Hold the breath in for as long as you can. And then when you need to, gently exhale. Nice. Come to stand. Just going to find the four corners of our feet as we shake our hands out. I've done this in other sequences. It's a really nice way just to detoxify any tension in the spine through the hands and through the arms. You can lift them up and lift them down, but really vigorously just shake out the hands. And then we're going to take this into a little twist. So I like to keep my knees bent, tailbone long and extending, the tailbone is the anchor, the keystone of the pose. And we're just revolving around the axis of our spine. And since we just did Kabbalah Bhati, you can bring the breath in here too. So inhaling to the left and exhaling to the right. Just let the arms hang. Nice, and then slowly come to center. Find Tadasana at the front of your mat. Feel all four corners of your feet press into the floor. Big toe ball, baby toe ball, inner heel and outer heel. Thigh bones engage, kneecaps lift. Tailbone lengthens into that new space between your heels. Collarbones widen. 
and just make a commitment here to release anything that's not serving you throughout this practice. Release anything that's blocking your listening. Inhale, palms touch above the head. Exhale, swan dive forward, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step to plank pose. So in plank, our shoulders and hips are level. Our spine is relating to the ceiling. Our heels are pressing the wall away. All 10 fingers are spread as far apart as possible. Our tailbone is lengthening towards our heels so our navel can engage towards our spine and the ceiling. Just begin to inflate this shape with your breathing as you locate your left shoulder, right shoulder, left hip, right hip. And see if you can breathe into the space of your torso, diagonally up and down and sideways. You're gazing at a spot about a foot in front of you. When you need to, you can drop the knees. From here, we're going to move into cat-cow. So inhaling, collarbones wide, heart opens. Exhale, arch, lower back rounds. A few more on your own breath. Inhale, arching. Navel to spine, core is engaged, collarbones splay open. Exhaling, round. Firing up your ujjayi breathing. Tapping into the qualities of your breath in this moment. The next inhale, come to a neutral cat. Feel through your palms and your knees. Make sure your shoulders are stacked above the wrists and your hips are stacked above the knees. From here, we're going to reach the right arm forward. We're going to slip the left arm underneath for a twist. So your hips stay in the exact same situation. Sit bones are relating to the wall behind you. Tailbone lengthening to the wall behind. Our torso, our upper back, is in a twist. Press firmly through the right palm. Option to press through and bend the elbow slightly to display your heart. Tune into your breath here. Close your eyes. You need to make more space for breath in this pose, in this particular situation. Again lengthens towards the back wall. This is our anchor, our stability as we play in the twist. And exhale, back to center. Let's wash it out with the cat. Inhaling, collarbones wide. And cow, lower back rounds. Nice. Once again, find the neutral spine. Inflate your torso with your breath. Exhale. Inhale, left arm reaches, right arm threads underneath for the twist to the opposite side. Sit bones relate to the wall behind, tailbone lengthens in between the sit bones. Navel is up and in. And just let your breath flow with your limbs in this shape. Close your eyes if you can. Left palm presses firmly into the ground as leverage. And perhaps, if you'd like, coming in slightly, bending the elbow to rotate your collarbones and your heart towards the ceiling. Close your eyes and imagine where you can make new space for breath in your body. Nice, and come back to all fours. Press firmly through your palms, curl your toes under. We're going to rest our torso on our thigh bones as we push back into a modified dog. So again, torso is lying on our thigh bones. Our knees are generously bent. It's as if we're doing a handstand in the upper body and just draping our spine 
Over our thigh bones, let the neck go. Wiggle your jaw back and forth, let the jaw go. Where can you make new space for breath up and down the spine in this situation? Nice, and gently straighten the legs just for a moment. Walk in, step your feet towards your hands. You can bend your knees as you take hold of opposite elbows. Once again, let the neck go. You can go slightly right to left. Just hanging, trying to find traction in the spine, especially the low back. Nice, inhale, half lift, shoulder blades glide down the back. Exhale, fold. Inhale, circle the arms down, around, and up. Palms touch above your head. Exhale, press the air away. Inhale, toes come to touch, chair pose. Shift your weight into your heels. Tailbone lengthens towards your heels. See if you can lift all ten toes off the mat and place them back down, spreading them farther apart. Feel the two sides of your seat wrapping in towards one another. And fire up your breathing. Nice. Inhale, lift. Exhale, fold over your legs. Inhale, half lift. Shoulder blades glide down the back. Exhale, step to plank pose. Inhale, hold plank. Exhale, locate all four corners of the torso once again. And just practice inflating your torso with breath. Can you make the space of the torso wider, longer, diagonally, front to back and side to side? We're going to press back into dog, but you're going to step your feet to either side of your mat. So you're in a wide down dog. This is our second down dog variation, again allowing us to find extra length in the spine. So your left and right feet are stepped to either side of your mat. Legs are straight, torso folds and hangs. Your hands are very engaged, just like you're doing handstand in the upper body. Feel your upper arms externally rotate, so as if your inner arms could move up towards the ceiling. Shoulder blades glide down the back. Navel lifts, tailbone lengthens, press yourself further back towards your legs. Back of the neck is long. Feel anything that's not serving you drip through the top of your head out onto the floor. One more deep inhale here, exhaling. Gently walk the feet to the hands once again. Inhale, half lift, shoulder blades glide down the back. Exhale, fold, toes touch. Inhale, chair pose once again. Shift your weight into your heels, tailbone lengthens towards your heels. and fire up your breathing. Squeeze your left and right seat towards one another for stability and then feel your tailbone lengthen even more towards the heels. We're going to place the right palm on the low back. Use the left hand as a lever as you come into a flat back and then reach. It's that left hand reaching and that extension that's going to take you into a rotation as you twist to the right. Just like the twist we did on the floor, our sitting bones are relating towards the back wall. Our tailbone is lengthening towards the back wall. Lower back is stable and we're rotating around the axis of our spine and the thoracic in the upper back. Make sure you're not holding any tension in your neck so you can look at the floor or gaze up to the ceiling if that's comfortable. Locate a long line of energy from your tailbone to the crown of your head. Let your neck move to complete that line. On the inhale, grow longer. 
On your exhale, let your core move you deeper into the twist. Nice. Inhale, back to chair. Firing up your breathing and your heat. Exhale, the left palm to the low back. Right hand acts as a lever and reaches bringing you into a flat back. Reach farther. This extension takes you into a rotation as you twist to the left. You can peek down and make sure your knees are in one line. That's usually a hint to whether our sit bones are in one line. Once again, feel your left and right seat hugging towards one another, tailbone lengthening away towards the back wall. It's that stability and anchor of the low back that lets us twist around the spine and the upper back. See if you can lower your seat a little bit more. Shoulder blades splay apart. Close your eyes if you can. Breathe to find a long line of energy, tailbone to crown of head. Adjust the neck to complete that line. Let your breath flow. On the inhale, long line of energy, tailbone to crown of head. On the exhale, your core contracts to move you deeper into the twist. Inhale, chair. One breath here. Rive. Exhale, carries you down. Fold over the legs. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, plank. Lower all the way down to the floor. All ten toenails touch the floor, come into cobra. Big inhale here. Feel the collarbones widening, tailbone lengthening towards the heels. Exhale. Come through child's pose with the toes curled under, quarter dog, to take you back into your full downward facing dog. Let the neck go, pedal the legs here. Inhale the right leg up and back. Exhale, footsteps between the hands for high lunge. Hips are square to the front of the room. Once again, that left and right seat are energetically hugging towards one another. Knit your front ribs together. Feel your thigh bones radiating away from your pelvis, securing your feet into the ground. Once again, Right hand is going to secure the low back. Left hand reaches as we come into a lunge twist. Option one, stay here. Option two, lower the knee to the ground. Both are valid. Both have equal benefits. The challenge is to do which one honors you and your body most in this day and this situation. It's listening. Here, locate a long line of energy from your heel to your tailbone to the crown of your head. Let your neck find that line. Inhale, get longer. Exhale, your core moves you deeper into the twist. From here, yawn your arms apart, but stay to twisted. So you're facing the side wall. Deep inhale here. On the exhale, Back arm is going to reach the back thigh. Your top arm is going to come up. It's a side bend, a back bend, a balance, and a twist. Let your breath flow. Close your eyes if you can. Where can you find new space for breath in this situation? Splay your rib cage to the ceiling. Again, you can also do this with the back knee bent, just as valid. And then exhale, windmill the arms down to the inside of the front foot. Extend the back knee back and down. You're going to point the front foot about 45 degrees out. We're in lizard. Come down to your elbows or a block or staying up on the hands. Again, all choices have equal benefits. The real challenge is tuning into ourselves and figuring out which one serves us the most in this moment. 
not yesterday's body, not tomorrow's, but really practicing with today's body and today's intent. Let your breath flow here. Navel is engaged up into the spine. A few gentle rocks diagonally front and back. Let your neck go. Let your tongue relax, soften the space around your eyes, just drop in. Breathe into the back of your waist, feel it get wider. Exhale, release. Inhale, we're gonna come up so we're all on our palms. From here, you're gonna leave the left foot on the ground, left palm on the ground. You're gonna reach back with the right hand to grab the foot for a thigh stretch. Hand presses into the foot, and then foot energetically presses into the hand. Find that dynamic. And then from here, the foot kicking into the hand, use that to open your collarbones, and we're in a twist. Find a long line of energy from your knee to your tailbone to the crown of your head. Let your neck adjust to find that line. Inhale, grow longer. Exhale, your core contracts, collarbones widen to move you deeper into the twist. Nice, let that back knee go. You're gonna step back into plank. Down dog. Inhale, rock the body forward to plank once again. Lower all the way down to the mat. Drop the knees if you'd like. And then inhale, we're going to take Shalabhasana with the arms clasped behind the back. Option one, stay here, pressing all ten toenails into the mat. Collarbones widening. Fists with the hands. Pulling towards the back wall, navel engaged. Neck relaxed, so look down. Take the neck out of it. Option two, also lift the legs. Shalabhasana. Let your breath flow. Nice, and then press back. Quarter dog. Downward facing dog. Inhale the left leg up and back. Set the left leg through, high lunge. Find your hips square to the front of the room. Deep inhale here. Knit the front ribs together, feel yourself move into your back body. Knee is 90 degrees over the front ankle. Take the arms up, high lunge. Feel the thigh bones radiating away from the pelvis, grounding through the feet. From here, we're going to take the left hand to the low back, reaching with the right. It's this extension that's going to take us into a rotation as we twist to the left. Feel the left and right seat energetically hugging together. Again, option two, take the knee to the ground. In either case, tailbone's gonna lengthen towards the heel. Tap into your breathing. Find that long line of energy from the heel to the tailbone to the crown of the head. Make any adjustment in the neck to complete that line. Inhale, feel the line grow longer. Exhale, move deeper into the twist. Inhale, length. Exhale to the core contracting that moves you deeper into the twist. Inhale, yawn the arms apart, but stay twisted. You're facing the side wall. Back hand reaches back thigh. Front arm comes up. It's a balance and a side bend and a twist. Hug your hips energetically towards one another. This will help you find stability, lengthen the tailbone down. 
Feel your rib cage long, yawn apart to the ceiling. Keep that front knee bent actively and back heel active, pressing a wall away. Two more deep breaths here. Just let your breath flow, finding new space in the body. And then windmill your arms down. Come to the inside of the front foot. Lengthen the back knee down. Front foot comes to a 45 degree angle. Again, you can stay here or lower the elbows or rest your head or your palms or your elbows into a block or in lizard. Let your neck go. Take any small movements rocking side to side. Take two deliberate breaths with your eyes closed, scanning the body interiorly. On the exhale, releasing anything that's not serving you. Anything that's blocking your listening. Anything that's blocking your integrity with yourself. Just drop in. Inhale, palms to the mat. We're going to leave the right palm on the mat. We're going to reach up and over with the left palm to grab the back foot. Pull the foot in towards your seat and then feel your foot press into your hand, kicking away from you and how that opens your collarbones. You're in a twist. Option to bring the front hand forward or down, adjust as you need. Close your eyes and tap into a long line of energy from your knee to your tailbone to the crown of your head. On the inhale, get longer. On the exhale, use your core to contract you and expand the collarbones as you come deeper into the twist, kicking the back leg into your hand, the back foot into your hand. And let your breath flow. Nice, and then release that back foot. Push back into downward facing dog. Inhale to plank. Exhale, lower all the way down. Inhale, let your left cheek rest on the mat. You're going to extend all ten toes, so all ten toenails are on the ground. Lengthen your tailbone so it fills the space between your heels. Feel your hip points press into the ground and your navel move up and in towards the ceiling. From here, bend the knees. Reach back, take your heels. Just like we felt the foot kicking into the hand, here feel the ankles kicking away from you or in Dhanurasana. And then let the neck go, take the neck out of it. Option two, take uh, Shalabhasana again. If you're in Dhanurasana, core is engaged, tailbone is lengthening towards the back wall, heels are energetically hugging towards one another, so see if you can bring the left and right heel closer together, this is going to make a more intense stretch in your collarbones. Neck is loose, we're looking down, you can point the feet, lift. Deep inhale, exhale, right cheek to the mat, let it go. You can wag your tailbone from side to side. Exhale, we're going to sit back on our knees, take your knees as wide as the mat, ease your sitting bones towards your heels, extended child's pose. Breathe into the back of your waist. Exhale, feel your third eye, the space between the eyebrows, slightly above, pressing into the mat or a block. Firm through your palms, through the left and right arm, hugging towards one another as you shift back into downward facing dog. 
Inhale the right leg up and back. Inhale it through, warrior one. So in warrior one, just like in high lunge, our hips are square to the front of the room. So find that. One of the key ways to find it is by pressing the back ankle into the mat like crazy and finding an internal rotation of the back thigh and then bending deeper in the front knee. From here, we want to take everything in the front body and move it towards the back body. So once you've found your stability in the legs, knit the front ribs together and just feel energetically you taking up residence in the back of your heart, in the back plane of your body. Nice. From here, we're going to spring forward into warrior one. Great pose for a block. Once again, we want to even out the hips. So for most of us in warrior one, we need to energetically move the left hip down in space and hug it towards the right. That's it. Find a bit of a cobra in the upper back and locate that long line of energy heel to tailbone to crown of head, make any adjustments in the neck to make that true. Inhale, find that length. And then exhale, breathe solidarity into your foundation, into your standing leg. Inhaling length. Exhale, this time we're gonna step back. You're gonna come into pyramid pose. So your hips are about, or your feet are about hips width apart. Fold over your front leg. Just drop your torso for a hamstring stretch. You can actually bring both hands to the outside of the foot. Let your neck go. Drop in. And from here, continuing on our theme, we're going to take the right hand to the low back. The left arm is going to reach and we're going to come in to twisting triangle. So this left arm can come to a block either on the inside of the foot or the outside of the foot, or it can come to the floor. The key here is that the seat, the left and right seat are energetically squeezing towards one another. The tailbone is long, core is engaged. And from here, if it feels safe, you can lift that top arm towards the ceiling, revolve triangle. Your legs have never been so strong, but your torso has never been so soft. Nice. And then exhale, frame the feet. Step back, dog. Inhale, plank, your choice of a vinyasa, so either knees, chest, chin, or lowing through chaturanga. Up, dog. Pushing back into downward facing dog. Inhaling the left leg up and back. Exhale, step it through, warrior one. Once again, hands on hips, so find those square hips, just like in high lunge. Back heel presses into the mat. Back thigh rotates. Drop your tailbone. Knee bends over the front ankle for a 90 degree. And then from here, bring everything in. So front ribs knit together. Feel yourself just moving into the black back plane of your body and your torso literally backing up. Arms high, shoulder blades glide down the back. Deep inhale here, warrior one. From here, we're going to spring off the back foot to come into warrior three. So once again, using that front body as a lever. And then in warrior three, conscientiously moving the right hip down. So it's even with the left. Left and right seat hugging towards one another. Pick a spot on the floor. Great pose for a block. Breathe in, find that long line of energy from heel to tailbone to crown of head, make your neck long. 
Exhale, radiate down through your foundation, which is that standing leg. Inhaling and exhaling, really kick through that back heel. We're going to step back, Parjvottanasana, pyramid pose. Let your neck go. You can take both hands to the outside of the left foot. Neck long, eyes soft. And then from here, left hand comes to the low back, keeping it stable, supported, even. The right hand is going to reach forward or come to a block on the inside or the outside of the left foot as we come into revolving triangle. Once again, left and right seat hugging towards one another is going to be the key, the stability point. You can make your stance wider, as wide as you need here. And then if you want, that top arm circles around and up, collarbones splay wide as your hips hug towards one another, energetically hugging in towards the midline. Inhale, find that long line of energy from tailbone to crown of head. Make any adjustments in the neck to make that so. Back of neck is long. On the exhale, it's your hips hugging towards one another and your core engaging that moves you deeper into the triangle pose, revolved triangle. Collarbones splay open. And then exhale, hands frame the front foot, plank, choice of vinyasa. Exhale, and we'll meet back in downward facing dog. Bend your knees, we're going to come into tabletop. From here, you're going to take your right knee behind your left. We're going to sit back. We're coming into Gomukhasana. So feet are flexed. If you can't easily be here, just sit up on either a bolster, a pillow, a book, a block, whatever you have available. From here, place your hands on your feet, close your eyes. Tap into a long line of energy from the two sits bones to the crown of the head. And then gently let the torso, staying long and extended, drape forward. Only at the last moment does your upper back round. Bring the hands out in front of you to fold over the knees. Close your eyes and let your breath flow throughout this pose. And if your hips are talking to you, answer them with your breath. Your left hip may be telling you its life story, it may be telling you it hurts, it may be telling you it's feeling pulled. Just answer it with your breathing, with your deep, nourishing breath. To let your body know that you care about its well-being. Nice, and then gently walk up. We're going to keep this top left leg exactly as it is. We're just going to extend the right leg. You can point the foot now or just leave it neutral. Flex the bottom foot. Inhale, arms come to touch above the head. Exhale, fold. This is a deep hip stretch, hamstring stretch, low back stretch. Here, try to not think about how far you go into the pose. It's really not our intention here. Our intention is to see where we can soften in the right hip, where we can relax the hamstring, keeping the foot flexed and engaged and where we can send breath in between the shoulder blades and the back of our heart. 
feel the bones of your body drop down into this shape. Let your chin really drop into your chest. See if you can locate any kind of line from the back of the neck that circles all the way down into the right hip. So really let the neck go. Tongue softens. Space between the eyebrows softens. One more deep inhale. Slowly rock yourself up to stand. This foot comes to the outside of the right knee. Bring the right foot by the left seat. We're all set up for Ardhya Matsana and Jasana. Inhale, exhale, twist to the left. You can hug that knee in, or if you have the mobility, you can use the elbow. Locate your sitting bones and then breathe a long line of energy from between the sits bones to the crown of the head. Exhale, use your core to move you deeper into the twist. Inhaling, growing taller, exhaling, moving deeper into the twist. And then just turn your head, keeping everything else exactly as it is, to just take your neck out of the twist so your head is facing forward. And then just do that same action, growing longer and contracting deeper into the twist but keeping the neck out of it. Just twisting out anything that's not serving you. Let it go, feel it sink through your sit bones down into the floor. Nice, and then gently release. We're gonna come to take Gomukhasana on the other side. So this time, the right leg is gonna be on top of the left. So right knee stacks on top of left. Nice. Find your sits bones. Flex the feet. This protects the knee joint and the ligaments in the knee. Hands hold the feet. Feel yourself move into the back body. Locate your two sitting bones and the long line from between your sits bones and the crown of the head. Inhale. Exhale carries you forward, keeping this length and this extension. Only at the last moment does the upper back finally round. So we come into Gomukhasana on the second side. Dropping in. Feel the low back long and extending towards the floor, tailbone extending towards the floor. Chin is relaxed completely. And whatever's happening in the hips, just answer with your breath. Just sending space, breath, nourishment, intelligence into the area of the hips. Just unraveling any tension. Gently walk the hands up. Right leg is going to stay where it is. This time the left leg is going to extend long on the floor and flexed. Inhale once again, find your sitting bones. This is also a great pose to be propped up on a block or a pillow or a bolster. Inhale, arms rise. Exhale, fold over your front leg. Now once again, this is not a competition or contest to see how far we can go into this fold. Rather, we want to find an interesting place where we are feeling sensation in the left hip and perhaps the low back and perhaps the hamstring. We're moving our shoulders away from our ears and onto our back. And we're breathing into the space between the shoulder blades, the back of the heart. And we're just letting sensations in the left hip or in the hamstring be interesting to us. We're answering them with our breathing. 
and seeing if we can just sit here and be patient if those sensations will dissipate. If we can dissipate and saturate them with our breath. Make sure the chin is dropped fully into the chest. Slowly walk the hands up. Right foot on the outside of the left knee. Left foot comes in by the right seat for Ardha Matsyandrasana. Feel your sitting bones firmly on the ground. Inhale, palms touch. Exhale, twist to the right. can hug that knee in, or again, if you have the mobility, elbow acts as leverage against the knee. Inhale, grow taller. Locate that line of energy from between the sits bones to the crown of the head. Exhale, collarbones wide, and it's your core, your belly button moving into the spine that moves you deeper into the twist. Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, twist. And then from here, just turn the face, take the neck out of it. To turn the face to look over your left shoulder. Inhaling, length. Exhaling, moving deeper into the twist. Close your eyes if you can. Where can you find new space for breath in this shape? Nice, and then feet come forward to Dandasana staff pose. Again, another great pose to prop up. Inhale, grow taller. Exhale, fold over the legs. Knees can be bent or straight. I usually like to start with bent knees and then slowly straighten them. Inhaling, find length rippling through the lower back, upper back, chin lifts slightly, exhale. Fold deeper into the forward fold. Once again, initiating from the sit bones. Inhale, find length, lower back, mid back, upper back, chin rises slightly. Exhale, it's your core that moves you deeper into the twist. Deeper into the fold. Inhale into the back of your heart. Inhale into the back of your waist. Just letting on your exhale, the breath dissipate throughout the whole body. So again, chin is dropped into the chest. Back of the neck is long. And then slowly, one vertebra at a time, roll up. Place the soles of your feet on the floor. Shift your hips forward. We're gonna bring the arms in front of us as if someone was punching out through our core. We're gonna roll down to the ground one vertebra at a time. Just taking our time, staying mindful. From here, extend the left leg, extend the right leg. Feel the elbows press into the mat. Let your shoulder blades come to touch and lengthen down. And then from here, readjust your tailbone once again. This is so the most of our shoulder blades and the maximum amount of our spine and low back can be on the floor. Let your neck roll from side to side. Left ear touches the mat, right ear touches the mat, so you can find the back of your head, center. And keeping your hands out beside you, or taking your left hand to your heart, right hand to your belly. Close your eyes, just feel yourself drop in. Shavasana, corpse pose.
Slowly wiggle your fingers and your toes. Bring your hands up above your head for a big cat stretch. Bring your left foot in or your knee into your chest and then your right knee into your chest. Give yourself a hug. Rock ever so gently left to right, lengthening the tailbone as you do. And with your knees into your chest, just fall to the right side. Make a pillow for your head with your right arm. Two deep breaths here. And then push through your left hand to come up to a sit, letting your head be the last thing to come up. And just find a cross-legged seat. Keep your eyes closed if you can. Place the hands on the knees. Feel your shoulder blades moving down the back, neck long, ears moving away from the shoulder blades. Soften the space behind and around your eyes. Let your tongue rest at the bottom of your mouth. One of the privileges of this practice is that it lets us burn off, work through, heat up, and release anything that is blocking us, anything that is not serving us. On the inhale, conscientiously locate one thought that is blocking you that you want to release from your body. And on the exhale, let it be so, let it go. Once again, inhaling, conjuring up that thought, exhaling, release. By opening the body with breath and with space, we're able to investigate and find the things that aren't working for us, that are blocking, blocking our listening and our ability to be true to ourselves in each and every moment. This is what the world is asking from us, to be true to ourselves in each and every moment. Bring your hands to prayer in front of your heart. Let the feelings you've generated throughout this practice radiate through your entire body and have a positive ripple effect into the universe around you. Thank yourself for practicing. And I bow to you. Namaste.